Chapter 2 The Durst Home On entry into the residence, the group immediately find Cooley at the base of a grand spiral staircase headed up. Cooley, a blood hunter by trade, says he was led here from the mist by two children begging him to save their brother, Walter, in the attic and kill the monster in the basement. Sharing their experience with the children, they attempt to leave the home to seek the little ones. On trying the door, however, it seems to be locked tight. Beginning their search, taking note of how clean everything was, they examined the main hall, finding the bizarre wood cup motif along the stairway. It showed if he touched wood, upon close inspection, sinister snakes woven in with the vines and skulls adorned the piece. Celine grabs a sword from the fireplace, a simple long sword with a cameo on the cross guard of a windmill. Pazosa took a black silken cloak from a closet and Celine decided to help herself to a top hat she found on the top shelf. Deciding to search the rest of the floor before heading up, the group went into a room resembling a hunting parlor. While Celine and Cooley eyed the stuffed walls in the corner, they joined the search when the first place burst to life. Ion unlocked a cabinet in the corner, finding three different crossbows, and the bolts to accompany each. When looking back toward the stuffed walls, they swore they had moved, opting to tie the beasts up in rope just in case they decided to be more animated. Cooley barred the door as they left with a chair from the table and parlor. Moving into the dining room, Ian opted to try a bite of pristine feast that lay on the table for them. Young Lockley resisted an immense urge he felt upon eating the bite to sit and eat the entire table's worth of food. Making it into the kitchen they found a fully stocked pantry and a dumb waiter. Sark opted to send up the box and then look down the shaft, only narrowly being saved by Pazuzu. On heading up to the second floor, Sarka decided to vandalize all of the display armors. Wrecking them. This floor was pristine and well cleaned as well, not a speck of dust in sight. In the hall they found a family painting, labeled in the corner. The painting was of Gustav the father, Elizabeth the mother, Rosalina, Rose, Thornbolt, Thorn, and lastly, held in Gustav's arms, Walter. The last, however, is a simple bundle of cloth, no features are visible. Coming into a performance room, they heard the airy harp and harpsichord play themselves and then continued to play after the players performed notes on them. In the study, Ian took some letter-making tools and a seal with the same windmill as the family crest. So meanwhile looking through the bookshelves found a red back book with no title. Upon removing the book, a shelf slid open revealing a chest, half open with a skeleton hung over the edge. The skeleton had three darts buried in its neck and shoulder. Inside the chest, Celine found the deed for the Durst House, the Durst Windmill, three magic scrolls and a letter written by one Strug von Sarovic. It accused the owner of the residence of committing atrocities in the hidden altar and of being disloyal to his wife, fathering a stillborn son. With these revelations, the party headed up to the third floor. On this floor, the party saw the dusty, dirty environment and was immediately assaulted by a suit of animated armor, which proved a stalwart foe. Choosing a room labeled Rosemary, the name roughly scratched through multiple times. They entered the room of who they believed to be the nursemaid. Inspecting the balcony, Ian found that while the balcony itself was visible, anything beyond the edge was simply mist. Taking the door back into the nursery from here, the party was greeted by the wail of a spectre flying out toward them. After dealing some serious wounds, they dealt with the spectre and found a small crib. In the crib they discovered... Nothing. A bundle of empty rags. A swaddle with no child. After being assaulted by a pair of brooms in a hole closet, the group made their way into the master suite. Here they found the hanging body they believed to be ghost of. After taking his ring and throwing the body down the dumbwaiter, they decided to rest in the suite. While resting, each experienced a disturbing phenomenon. They also found two letters that they swear were not present before they rested. One seems to be from Ghost of, 
apologizing to his children for what has happened. The other is from Elizabeth to someone unnamed. It asserts that they will carry out a sacrifice some time after it is written, and that because this one is innocent, it will work. It also implies that Elizabeth will no longer have to suffer the harlot's presence. The group surmises this harlot to be Rosemary, the nursemaid, who likely had a tryst with Ghost of. Cooley asserted that the innocent they planned to sacrifice might well have been Walter. Finding a hidden stairwell, the party went up into the attic. Here they found the body of who they believed was Rosemary stuffed into a storage trunk. Pazuzu seen that the bonds around the ribs and shoulders were covered in nicks and gashes. In the storage room they found the hidden staircase that they believe leads to the basement. They also found the children's bedroom. Using a key that Ian had taken from the study desk, he opened the door to the bedroom, and there among the toys, the playhouse, and the beds, were the remains of both Rose and Thorn, the latter still clutching his stuffed bear. Upon touching the remains, the group was greeted by the spirits of the children. They asked several questions of the two deceased heirs, learning that they were always locked in their room when their parents went to deal with the monster in the basement. Rose begged them not to leave and go through the hidden stairwell. As they left, however, Sarko and Yun became possessed by Thorn and Rose, respectively. On seeing Yun become extremely uncharacteristically bossy, and Sarko hiding behind Yun's body, Kuri correctly identified them as being possessed by the children's spirits. Pazusa convinced the children to leave the bodies of his comrades. As they made their way down the tight stairwell, each torch flared to life as they passed, descending ever deeper, eventually making their way below the earth itself.